Welcome back to Dragon Roost Tavern in uh, the first official dungeon crawl in this game. In the, in the traditional sense of the term, there is no way I'm going to include the Forsaken Fortress in that. Let's see if there's anything interesting over there. Maybe this. Oh, a joy pendant. Good thing I checked. It was in sort of an in interesting spot, so sort of makes sense that they would put that there. No! No, you gotta be kidding me. Not this room. This gives me so much trouble when I try to get past it. I'm gonna, just gonna throw this over there, and then what am I gonna do? I'm gonna tr I'm gonna just try running for it. Maybe if I just go there. Oh my God! It's it actually missed me. I'm gonna do it. Come on, hurry up! Yes! Oh my God! I'm doing it, and I'm up there. Oh wow! This room. Usually gives me so much trouble, and <laughs> I did it on my first try by just running for it. That magtail usually gives me so much trouble. It gets to hit me, and then there's not much that I can do except, you know, get my ass burned in the lava and try again and shit. But fortunately, that didn't even happen here. So, um, there, this is the last cauldron in this dungeon, but we're not gonna be able to do anything with it for the time being. Well, we could go back to the entrance, but I don't want to do so right now, because uh, if you just get out of, uh, in this door, we end up near the summit, and Valu looks even even more pissed uh, when you're up close. So let's climb up and see what's up with that. And uh, yeah, the stairs crumble, so you, there's really no time to waste on this. And... Oh, it figured. Yeah, didn't you? Did you really think Melly was going to be able to to uh, solve this all by herself? Anyway, this is the dungeon's mini boss. And one thing that's annoying about this game is that mini bosses are not uh, enemies that uh, you never meet otherwise. They're just uh, a whole lot of of tougher regular enemies. And uh, if you thought those two Bokoblins were it, think again. Moblin reinforcement, and this time we're actually going to be able to fight this sucker off. So, uh, this guy, he's not uh, trying very hard, but he can block your attacks with uh, his halberd, and no, you're not getting that halberd back. Come on, die, thank you. Yeah, these guys have uh, a lot more stamina than Bokoblins, but they're still pretty easy. Screw Manly, I just want to see what's inside that piñata. And here is a skull necklace. This is yet another kind of collectible trinkets that we're going to need many of uh, later on in the game. So since I have no use for those rupees, there's no sense in collecting them, so I'm going to talk to uh, Medley instead. And uh, wh even though she got captured, she found out what, what was wrong with Valu. Because some creature is doing reportedly awful things to his tail. Which begs the question, why doesn't he just fly out of there? As we are going to see later in the in the game, this guy can just fly around like nobody's business. So if there's this creature down there playing with his tail, just take the tail elsewhere and pronto, problem solved. Dumbest sky spirit ever. Anyway, uh, Rito's going to give me uh, something they used before the evolved wings, which turns out to be the grappling hook! This is, bar none, the item that I'm going to be using the most in all kinds of circumstances in this game. It has so many different uses, it's crazy, we're and we're going to be going through them all in the near future. And, uh, oh, sure, you can fly now, no problem. You didn't need me to throw you up there this time. Yeah, she, re she really learned to fly in a short amount of time, which she spent in a cage, might I add. Anyway, uh, first use of the grappling hook is that uh, you can use it to uh, uh, latch on to uh, some of these branches that are uh, found all throughout the game, and you can... Uh, swing on the on the rope like uh, we did back uh, in the pirate's ship as well as the forsaken fortress yeah ju just like that it's uh, n it's nothing too uh, too fancy except uh, that uh, this controller is a bit sensitive so aiming might be a little tougher at times anyway uh, we are back to uh, the door where we entered this room from but uh, we, we still don't have the boss key we need to progress even further. 
So we're going to have to go get the boss key, which is located uh, further down the mountain trail, so we get some more practice in with the grappling hook. It's not exactly the most exciting thing ever, but at least you get some practice uh, on uh, easy jumps like this before, you know, uh, we get some uh, trickier things to do with it uh, a bit later on in the dungeon, so I guess they want to make sure that we... Uh, that we have ample practice with just, you know, the basic function of the grappling hook, and am I going to be able to... Oh, yeah! Lion King moment! Followed up by a predictable Boca Blade ambush again, and I'm a total dumbass. I should have shown you uh, how to steal uh, how to steal the swag from enemies, but I guess this is going to wait until the next time I, uh, I find the Boca Blade, I guess. So, is there anything interesting? No, just money. So, now we're going to have to head down there. And the way you want to do this, you just want to bust all the ropes on this bridge. And after that, you're going to go down and... Okay, I was afraid I was going to go down into the lava. There's a treasure chest down there. Is it money we can't carry? Or is it a joy pendant? Or, yeah, it's a joy pendant. Uh, it's, it's, it's always a, f uh, a, a safe assumption to make. Whenever you see a chest that's out in the open like that, it's always going to be a freaking joy pendant. And I'm going to get increasingly pissed at these chests as I progress later into the game. Trust me. Now this, you want to cut all three at the same time with... Whoa! Hello, random lava geyser. But yeah, you want to cut them all at the same time with a spin attack. If you fail to cut all three... Uh, then uh, the platform is just going to hang on with the ropes that remain, and you're going to fall down in the lava, and you're going to have to restart that room again. And here's some basic platforming, nothing too tricky. Then again, we're still very early in the game, so this is to be expected. Now, once you're up there, you're going to find a door that's locked. To unlock it, you're going to have to swing on that... Uh, thingy hanging at, hanging down from the ceiling, and then it's going to go down, which is going to, uh, well, it, it actually the whole thing was a switch that uh, opens the door, and you can also use the grappling hook to kill uh, small enemies, such as keys. It won't work on anything bigger than that, but uh, you can steal items from some enemies, which we're going to get into as soon as I find something to steal from. Now, uh, this is going to introduce you to another thing you can do with the grappling hook. You can adjust your angle, like uh, with uh, regular ropes. You can also go up and down and adjust uh, the length of your rope accordingly, because if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have been able to jump all the way, all the way to solid ground, and I would have gotten my ass burned. Now, some more... Uh, some more platforms here, yet another of these, uh, I don't, I don't really know how to call these things, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm just gonna call them grappling hook targets, because functionally, that's what they are. Now, this room is the one with the boss key, and here's a magtail, the enemy from earlier, that, uh, ca that usually causes me trouble in that room, uh, from the beginning of the video. What you want to do, you want to you want to have it curl into a ball. So while it prepares to attack, it leaves its, it uh, it leaves itself open. So you want to nail it in the eye with the, the grappling hook or the boomerang. No, I didn't want to go this way. I wanted to put it down on there. Here we go. Now you have to hurry before it wakes back up because uh, yeah, it only stays uh, curled up for a limited amount of time and after that it wakes up starts uh, crawling around again. Anyway, we got the big key, as they are called in this game. You know what? Unlike Chugga Conroy, I'm, I'm not even going to try. I'm going to keep calling them boss keys, because I always call them boss keys, and I, ju I just don't give a shit. They're functionally the same thing. Now, when you make your way back from this room, you're going to notice that there are a few more enemies than... Uh, on our first uh, time through here, most of the new enemies are fire keys, which you got to be sort of careful about because they uh, they can deal extra fire damage on top of just running into you. So you can kill them with your sword, you can kill them with your grappling hook. Grappling hook is a bit slower, but uh, it's also um, a ranged alternative. It's if uh, it's not uh, right in your face. 
So now I want to do the opposite of what I did earlier. I want to get back up, and I think I got back up a little bit too much. I'm going to get down. Uh, did I get down enough? I think so. Maybe not. Oh, well, I'm just going to swing one more time, and after that, I'll chance it. Oh, yeah, that was pretty easy, actually. It didn't look like uh, I was going to be able to cover that much distance, but I did. Die! And you two, die! So, now you want to head back the way you came once again, down this ladder. You, d I, I suggest you don't simply jump off that ledge, because if you do that, more often than not, you're just going to be sent careening into the lava, and you're going to have uh, wasted your time trying to gain time, as with so many things in life. Now, we're back up here, and uh, we're going to have to make our way back to the bridge above, which respawned while we were away. Now, you just want to be careful to not uh, let Link uh, go completely... Oh, come on! A piñata, and it drops straight into the lava. Yeah, random enemies like that, uh, small enemies, can sometimes drop piñatas, but it's actually a rare occurrence, which is why I'm so pissed that it fell into the lava. Okay, now, getting back up there, uh, I guess the... The, the Bokoblin in the pot is going to, to return. Oh, this one as well, but no chance for a second Lion King moment. But, uh, yeah, what I did uh, before killing it is that I uh, used... Uh, I threw the grappling hook at the Bokoblin, as I'm going to do once again, like this. And it also has the advantage of uh, stunning the, the Bokoblin. Since you saw, it was in the middle of its attack animation, but it cancelled it once uh, the grappling hook hit. And uh, you can steal uh, joy pendants from Boko Blins. It's always going to be joy pendants. Don't expect gold feathers or skull necklaces or anything of the sort. The, uh, the kind of item you can steal is entirely defined by the type of enemy you're, uh, you're throwing your grappling hook at. So, for example, if you are... Um, if you if you throw the grappling hook at a red chew, it's always going to give you red chew jelly, and uh, each enemy will only give you a one of a certain item. Uh, it's going to give you sometimes it can gives you hearts and rupees if you keep using it on the same enemy, but as far as spoils go, it's one per enemy, and there's no way around it. So now that uh, we have the grappling hook and everything we need, I'm actually going to demonstrate what cauldrons do. You just go into this one, and then it transports you to the next one, which is the one at the entrance. So I'm going to try and get uh, some more joy pendants from these guys. And no, 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 I didn't want to do that! Oh, come on, get out of there! No! Jeez, it's actually sort of annoying because uh, I'm not using a game. I'm not using a GameCube controller, as I said a few times so far. So um, I'm not fully accustomed to uh, this button light layout for this game. Nonetheless, I don't think I did too badly there. I just wanted to jump off that thing instead of hanging on to it, but didn't work out too well. Anyway, we're making our way back to uh, the. Uh, to the place where I said you needed the, the grappling hook to get that uh, treasure chart, which is right over there. There are a few of these treasure charts in dungeons that require you to backtrack a bit because um, it requires the dungeon's treasure and you don't have it yet at that point. We're going to see it most notably in the, the Tower of the Gods, as I recall. Here we go! We got yet another treasure chart, which means we're going to read the description for the item yet again. Come on, Nintendo! One is enough! I know what these things do by now, even though I haven't uh, salvaged any uh, treasure from the ocean floor yet, because you need the grappling hook to do so. We're going to get into that uh, once I get back to sea, and here are a few chews. I'm just going to steal from one, kill them both, and hope the other drops... Uh, a chew jelly? Nope, no such luck. Then again, they're not very useful, to be perfectly honest with you. So we're gonna head back to the entrance room and uh, take the cauldron back to uh, back to the room with the uh, the boss door, which was the room we were in before. So this one is gonna take us to the second cauldron, and so I'm, I'm just going to have to jump back in and uh, get to, to the to the last one. So join me next time. Oh, hello there! Bats through the floor. Awesome. So um, as I was about to say, I'll see you next time when we.
we fight the first boss in The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker.